Hi all, welcome to Sidza.com. Now in this video we will learn about the rate law and the order of correction. When we write down a particular action, suppose we got here an A plus B, say it is 2 times B and this is 3 times C. Suppose this is a balance the chemical equation where one uh, mole of A reacts with two moles of B and you get three moles of C. This is a balanced chemical equation. Regarding the rates of the reaction, in 1867, Gulberg, a very famous scientist, put forward a result which is called as a law of mass action. And according to this law, it says that the rate of a reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactants. That means if you increase the concentration of the reactants, rate of reaction increases and each term is raised to the power equal to their coefficients that you see in the balanced chemical equation. Suppose for the one, you know, A it's 1, so the coefficient is 1, so the power will be 1. For the B, the coefficient is 2, so the coefficient is 2, the power is 2 here. So according to the Lapma, you know, Lapma section, each term should be raised to the power equal to their coefficients, you know, in the balanced chemical equation. But later on, it was found, you know, through experiments that the law does not hold go, you know, uh, good for most of the reactions. It wasn't correct for many of the reactions. Therefore, a new law was given called as the rate law. And according to this law, it says the rate of a reaction depends on the concentration of reactants A and B. It is directly proportional to the product of the concentration of the each reactant, but the power that each you know term should be there you know raised to is something which is an expert you know which you can determine experimentally. We can't say just looking at the balanced chemical equation what should be the power. Is it one or two or something different? That's why you know you can say it is alpha and the beta. Right? And this alpha plus beta is called as order of reaction. Right? Order of reaction. Alpha and beta, this is something which you can, you know, determine only through experiments. So this is a pure experimental quantity. Right? It is an experimental quantity. So we can't determine it theoretically, just looking at the balanced chemical equation. That is the main difference between the rate law and the law of mass section. Right? Fine. So alpha and the beta, this is an experimental quantity. Alpha is actually called as an order of reaction with respect to A and beta is the order of reaction with respect to B, right? And if I write down the same reaction now, you know, let's uh, remove the proportionality here. So I can say the rate of a reaction will be equal to constant K, rate constant K, time is concentration of A, power alpha, and concentration of B, power beta. And the alpha plus beta is called an order of reaction. What is this K here? The K is the rate constant K, right? It is called as the velocity constant or it's also called as the rate constant. Suppose if I take the concentration of A as one mole per liter and the concentration of B also as the one mole per liter, right? So if you take the concentration of each reactant as a unity therefore the rate will be equal to k because this whole term will become one right so therefore we can say the rate of a reaction will be equal to rate constant k now we can define the rate constant k we can say that the rate constant k or velocity constant right it may be defined as the rate of a reaction when the concentration of uh, when the concentration of each reactant is taken as unity, right? That's why the rate constant is also called as a specific, uh, you know, rate constant, specific reaction rate, right? It's also called as a specific reaction rate. 
So rate constant K determines the rate of a reaction when you take the concentration of each reactant as unity, right, as one. The value of this rate constant K, it depends on, it depends on the nature of the reactant. The first factor, you know, on which it depends, it depends on the nature, right? It also depends on the temperature and it also depends on the catalyst. Let's take here an example. Suppose we got a reaction in which A plus B it reacts and forms the C. Now whatever is the coefficient, the coefficient becomes irrelevant as per the rate law, right? Suppose here, according to the rate law, if the rate of a reaction for this particular reaction is written as like this, K into concentration of A, C to this power here alpha and the B is beta. Now suppose for this particular reaction, if alpha is one and beta is also one, right? So therefore, what should be the order of a reaction? We can say the order of a, a reaction will be one plus one, right? Alpha plus beta, so it is two. So we can say the reaction is a second order reaction, right? This is a second order reaction. And if, suppose, alpha here is zero and beta is one, and we can say the order of a reaction, order of a reaction, which is alpha plus beta, will be equal to zero plus one, okay? Which means that it will be a first order reaction, right? First order reaction. Here actually it means that the reaction with respect to A, because alpha here, right? With respect to A is zero order. That means if you change the concentration of A, the reaction rate doesn't change, right? Because if you put here the zero, concentration of A power zero, the whole term becomes one, right? Anything power zero is one, right? So that means even if you change now the concentration of A, you increase or decrease the concentration of A, the rate of a reaction will not change because with respect to A, the concentration, the rate of a reaction is zero order, right? So we can say here, reaction is zero order with respect to A, okay? And reaction is first order, right? It is first order with respect to B, right? Now let's take another example. Suppose you got A plus B and form with the C here. If rate of a reaction is second order, second order with respect to A and first order with respect to B. What will be the, what is the overall order of the reaction? You can see the rate of a reaction is second order with respect to A and it's first order with respect to B. That means the overall order of the reaction, we can write it like this, it will be equal to rate constant K times concentration of A into concentration of B and here alpha and beta. And now we got the alpha and the beta values there. From this data, it says alpha is two because with respect to A, the order is second, right? That means alpha is two. And first order with respect to B, that means the beta here is one, right? So therefore, alpha plus beta for this particular reaction will be two plus one, which is third order, right? You got the three here? So this means this is the third order reaction. This is the third order reaction. This is how we write down the rate of a reaction as per the rate law. Now in the next, you know, a uh, couple of videos, 
we will be doing certain numericals, certain exercises on the rate law and the order of reaction. Hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.